Uh, to the leader canner, leader, House uh, has passed two bills to delay the Obamacare mandates for both individuals and businesses. Here now with more on the vote, House Majority Leader Eric Canner. Scratching my head here, uh, uh, leader. I, I thought the president himself said, to do, "How long is the delay for the employer mandate that was in this bill that that you got that, that you just passed, uh, leader?" Well, first of all, I want to wish Becky a happy birthday. I hear it's a very special day, so Becky, happy birthday. Thank you, Leader She Cameron. loves this. You can't say it enough, I don't think. I don't think enough <laughs> guests can, can say it enough. It is all, you just embrace them. I tell you, it, I just it, had one last month, you embrace them. There's nothing so. you can do about it, is right. there? And, and yeah, think and about the alternatives. The alternatives are worse. much, much, uh, much, much worse. So, so um, it, but, it, was it just for a year, or was it like you Republicans like the permanent delay? Which well, I mean, we, we do want to permanently delay this thing, but I think what has happened here is you've seen the administration two weeks ago take a huge step, and that was to admit that this law is flawed. And in fact, what happened this week was even further evidence that there is growing bipartisan sense that this law needs to be stopped. Well, why only 35 Dems voting for the employer delay? Well, I don't get that. I mean, 174 voted against the employer mandate delay. Was it not just for a year? What did the bill say? Delay it for... <laughs> Well, Joe, well, the, 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 I think the important piece is you've got also now Democratic union leaders who have written a letter to Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid outlining the threats that Obamacare poses, not only to health care, but to jobs uh, in America. In fact, they said that they foresee nightmare scenarios to the health and well-being of working families. So again, in a, in a very peculiar development here, you've got growing sense of commonality between the White House, union leaders, and House Republicans <laughs> that this thing is not ready. No, no, now, we don't think it'll ever be ready. Those are strange bedfellows. I've never seen you uh, say, well, the unions don't think that. I mean, normally you would be doing things maybe that the union... But what was it, uh, because I, I saw James Hoffa's comments, too, and he said, and you know what, the, those words are etched in my mind too because every time I heard them I didn't believe them and that was that if you like your plan you can keep it and right. so many times it, now they're saying that that was promised to them and, and they're worried they're not going to be able to keep it. What, what changed in, in the union, what did the unions finally see was going to happen to them? That, that uh, a lot of employers were going to uh, end their coverage? Well first of all I think they saw the uh, beginning of the crack in the 40-hour work week. You know that is something that has been uh, yeah. a, a a union goal forever and Full ever. Part-time stuff. Yeah. That's right. So you're now becoming and seeing now growth in part-time employment in this country, while you're seeing a reduction in full-time employment, which is obviously not something that working families want. Uh, and then I think what they're seeing, as well as everyone else, is that employers are beginning to rethink now whether they're going to be providing a benefit, which goes to your point, that number one promise the president had made is if you like your health care, you can keep it. I think the unions, like so many others, are seeing that that promise is, is going to you be see, broken. Hey, Eric, did you see that? I, I love the piece in the New York Times, front page on the right, about the 50% the less for, for health care premiums. Did you see how many people had that that they were basing that 17,000 people in the state of New York right. had that the, the 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 premium which was 100 or you know double what it was going to be under under Obamacare but that was that was the headline for the New York right. Times well, 50% listen, you got, cut you got a question always but what i can say is New York uh, is a state that's had extremely high benefit mandates unlike most of the rest of the country and as you know, that state has not had the best fiscal experience nor outlook. And this is what's happening at the federal level. You are driving up the fiscal stress and the deficit here. And most importantly, you are threatening the health and well-being of our working families, Eric, which is exactly the point that was made by these union leaders. We had Elizabeth Warren on, and, and we said, you know, you're, this, this glass steel thing has no chance of going anywhere, and here you are, you're talking about it, we're, we're wasting time. And, and But when I asked her, I said, the House has voted 36 times to, uh, to repeal Obamacare, and that, that wasn't going to happen. Why does everyone keep doing things that are never going to become law just to make statements? Is that, I mean, that's where we are now. And, and, well, and I mean, you see, I had, I had a, a, a very um, uh, robust exchange on the floor of the House yesterday with uh, uh, Democratic Whip Steny Hoyer about this very point. This is not just 
um, a message stands. This is real. I mean, you've got again, you've got bipartisan, secret, you've got bipartisan agreement. This thing is not ready. The White House then took the position they could selectively enforce the Obamacare law and choose to uh, lift the mandate on employers. What about the rest of America? And that's why we took both steps, removing the mandate from employers as well as individuals, to say what's did fair you, is fair. This thing is with, not did, ready. Eric, we got to go. But did you agree with uh, the deal that, that the, the Senate made with uh, you know to get a cordre in and, and uh, to you know that uh, it, Look, it, it seems like whatever the Democrats want to do from now on, they, I mean uh, they can all do. They it. Have, all they have to do is threaten the nuclear option. I'm very disheartened, especially on the NLRB issues. Obviously, very, very serious policy issues at stake here. I'm, I'm really disheartened about like the outcome. Like a cheap deck of, that. of cards. Who was it? It wasn't, uh, and then, you know, McC I don't know. I, it's very, I don't know what's going on in Washington right now. Um, so, well, we're, well, listen, we are trying to go. You guys and, need some backbone. And, we are, we are going to try and find where there's common ground on things that make sense oh, for, gro for growth in this economy. I know you all are about the Delivering Alpha conference that you <laughs> sponsored, and it's about in increasing the return on taxpayer investment here. That's where we got to focus is growing this economy, right. and that's what this whole discussion on Obamacare is about as well as health care. There you're preaching to the choir. The, the Delivering Alpha conference brought to you by CNBC, I think is what you meant to say, <laughs> right, leader? And, 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 or let's Absolutely. end with that. Let's end with a couple of bars of mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> There you go. Happy yeah. birthday. Happy birthday, Maggie. All right. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Eric. We'll see you.